Hey, Jenny, how are you? Eric, it's your 64th birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, thanks a lot. Would you be willing to answer 64 questions about yourself? For you, of course. Thank you. Okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you to answer 64 questions today? Oh, on my 64th birthday, 1 to 10, I'm going to have to go with 6.4. Nicely done. Where did you grow up? St. Louis. What do you miss about it the most? Cardinal baseball games at Bush Stadium. Ooh, that sounds cool. Have you always loved science? I have, but I also am the son of a scientist, and my father had started taking me to his lab when I was about six years old, and it just became a playground. Can you quickly tell us what DNA Day is? Oh, I'd love to, but here, come walk with me. DNA Day is a time of celebration of genetics and genomics. Specifically, we're celebrating the double helical structure of DNA that was discovered in 1953, and we're also at the same time celebrating the end of the Human Genome Project, which happened in 2003. That sounds really cool. Can you describe the field of genomics in three words? Oh, in three words, genomics, sure. Youthful, historic, transformational. Oh, nicely done. What do you think are the biggest challenges that the field of genomics is facing right now? Well, we have challenges because we're victims of our own success. I mean, we generate prodigious amounts of data and that almost overwhelm us. But that's actually a good position to be in. Oh, that sounds challenging. Speaking of victims of our own success, what famous performer would you like to play for a day? Oh, I would go with Paul McCartney. I bring my youthful appearance and charm and then I get to sing one of 64. Oh, what is the biggest impact that genomics has had on you? Well, it's made my career. I got involved in the field uh, when the word was coined, essentially, and I've been in it ever since. That's very cool. How did you celebrate completing the human genome sequence in 2003? Oh, well, I breathed a huge sigh of relief because, to be honest with you, I worried many times we wouldn't be successful, but thanks goodness the project was. I'm sure you celebrated more than that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's made you laugh the most at work? Well, me, because I'm the only one that laughs at all my jokes. <laughs> you got that right. Hey! Who's this? Good buddy! Uh, this, this is Cardboard Eric, of course. Hey, Cardboard Eric, how you doing? And do you want to ask me some questions on my birthday? Oh, he can talk? Okay. All the email. One thing, I'd go with poached salmon. My relaxation is through digital photography. Eric, I'm not going to lie to you. This was really weird. Was it? Well, okay. But he's a good friend. How often do you get to actually relax? Uh, between zero and ten times a week. Among the people you've met and been photographed with, who has made you really starstruck? Really starstruck? Well, could be Vice President Al Gore, maybe uh, President Obama or also high on the list would be Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. Wow, those are awesome. What's the best advice you've ever gotten from a friend? If it's free, take two. Whoa, Whoa careful there. <laughs> We're into the wall. Uh, can you tell us who that friend was? Ah, uh, my mother. Nice. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, Jen, how are you? Good, happy birthday. Oh, thank you so much. Do you guys want to ask Eric some questions for his birthday? I would love to ask Eric questions anytime. Go for it. So my first question, artificial intelligence. Yes. What are we using it for at NHGRI? Oh, let's see. Scientists here are using it to find the functional elements in the human genome, to figure out how differences in our DNA affect how the genome functions. And people like me and others are using it to clean up digital photos. So is that your favorite? Like if you could have artificial intelligence or a machine do anything for you, would you have it focus on your photos? Uh, that would not be if I could just wave a magic wand and do something with artificial intelligence. I would have it answer all of my emails every day perfectly well, just like I would do it. Well, since I personally perfectly answer all my emails, I'd have one fold all my laundry and put it away. That would be good. Oh, that would be awesome too. Switching gears. Yes. The Human Genome Project. Yes, I remember it well. What, did, what was the biggest challenge? Oh, well, there was no instruction manual on what we were supposed to be doing or when. It was absolutely a build the airplane as you fly it kind of an endeavor. Well, you built a good airplane. It, what was your um, favorite part of the Human Genome Project? The people. Working with all these incredible people from all around the world, many of which remain lifelong friends even today. Awesome. Well, I could ask you questions all day, but Jen. I think it's winter. Oh, great. 
So, um, in 20 words or less, okay. can you explain to me what the human pan genome is? Human pan genome, a set of high quality reference sequences from people across all different ancestral groups. And how does that help us in genome research? It helps us because every time we sequence a person's genome, we need to find the right match for that person's genome to be analyzed. And the best match is going to be somebody from a similar ancestral group or groups. And the pan genome eventually will provide that. Interesting. So I'm also going to switch gears a little bit um, and think about comparing people and how they do things. How should I celebrate my birthday when it comes? Well, since it's fresh in my mind today at 64, my suggestion is figure out your birthday, why it's significant, and then find a Beatles song to match it. Although, stay away from Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Sorry. No, no, no. All right, so um, which one is yours? My favorite Beatles song? Today on my 64th birthday? When I'm 64. Of course. Are you going to knit a sweater by the fireside tonight? Um, if I only knew how to knit. <laughs> Maybe I can get artificial intelligence to do that for me. There you go. Well, it's great chatting with you. Yep. Be well. Thanks again. Thanks for your care. questions. All right, let's get back to it. Okay. What are you most excited about these days? Oh, the next 64 years, which I think will be just as exciting as my first 64 years. I couldn't agree more. What's the last hobby you picked up? Cooking. Oh, uh, what's the coolest thing about being a dad? Oh, being able to have all this information about genomics and the environment about your kids. I mean, it's the ultimate genetics experiment. Yeah, I hope you have IRB approval for that experiment. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> all right, Eric, are you ready for a rapid fire round? Bring it on. Beach or mountains? Mountains. Red wine or white wine? Yes. Breakfast or dinner? Dinner. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Nailed it. Yes. Hey, what's going on out there? Hey, you want to go talk to our education director at NHGRI, Beth Tuck? Hey, Beth. Hey, Eric. How you doing? You wish me a happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I have a few questions okay. for you. Go for it. First, what do you find is cool about the newest sequencing technology? They get better every single year. Pretty cool. What are the coolest animals that have ever been sequenced? I think the coolest animals that have ever been sequenced are ones that are extinct. Wrong. <laughs> There's no right or wrong answers here. I think sequencing extinct animals is like way cool. Very cool. Um, why do we need to know so much about the genomes of other animals? Because we want to be able to compare our blueprint to the blueprint of all living forms. We want to have information about jellyfish and tardigrades and um, slime mold. Yes! You I love slime mold. I They're knew my you would. favorite. They're, <laughs> They're so cool. Um, do we really have similar DNA as fruit flies? We sure do. Of course we do. Just like these other critters. What other critters? Slime molds. <laughs> Don't get excited. Tardigrades, jellyfish. I love it. Um, can you explain how a genome is sequenced in 30 seconds or less? I don't need 30 seconds. No. You isolate somebody's DNA. You do some really cool things with it. You read three billion letters I got from mom, three billion letters I got from dad, and then you celebrate. Amazing. Thank you. 10 seconds. <laughs> that was really impressive. Thank you. It's good talking to you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Eric. All right, Happy see you later. Birthday. Thank you. Let's head back this way. Okay. All right, so if you could have anyone over for dinner, who would it be? Oh, anyone. I would go with Rosalind Franklin and Charles Darwin, and I'd even have uh, Gregory Mendel stop by for dessert. Oh, what a fun dinner party. Uh, what would you make for dinner? I think I'd make an impossible burger, in part because I think that Darwin would freak out thinking that I was playing with evolution and what happens with an impossible burger. Oh, way to toy with him. Uh, yep. What would you talk about? We would talk about the Human Genome Project, and then I would also talk about Taylor Swift, because I'd want them to think that I was both nerdy and hip. At that, the same time. That is the perfect combo of conversation. Uh, so, so all this dinner talk is making me hungry. Can you sequence a hot dog? You can absolutely sequence the DNA in a hot dog and you can figure out what kind of meat it's made out of. All right. I love that. That's really good to know. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to pop into our friend Theo's office who's going to ask a few questions. Okay, I'm game. Hey, Theo, I heard Hi. you want to ask me some questions. Yeah, so what's your favorite country to visit? Uh, of all the countries I've visited, Madagascar would be number one. I, I look forward to visiting that someday. What was the last country you visited? Oh, just a few weeks ago, Honduras. That is super Roatan cool. Roatan specifically. That is super cool. 
And what's a country you want to visit? I want to go to Namibia or New Zealand, both high on my bucket list. Mm. Same for both of them. Yeah, they're, <laughs> I hear they're incredibly beautiful. And what's a memorable moment from your travels? Well, I would say, especially as a genomic scientist in Madagascar, seeing an ayai, which is the most ancestral, most furthest away primate um, from humans. Way cool, saw it in the wild. Reading Gerald Durrell's book on I, I, the I, I, and I is one of the reasons I went into biology in the first place, actually. There so, you go. Well, thanks yep. so much. Good seeing you. Appreciate Good it. Good to see you. All right. Hey, Sarah. Eric. You, you break the copier again? Uh, nope, everything's fine. Okay. Hey, I heard it's your birthday. It is. Happy birthday. Thank you. What would you say to people who want to have a career in genomics? I would say go for it, especially if they have to remember you don't have to be a scientist to go into genomics. Oh, thank goodness, otherwise I wouldn't be here. And what is one personal change that you've made since COVID-19 pandemic? I, I dress much more casually, as you can see. That's a lovely including vest. a little fleece. That's a great vest. And what's, uh, what's your favorite website? My favorite website of all, duh, it's genome.gov. It's not Space Jam? Uh, no, it really is genome.gov. Hmm, that's not what your computer files say. <laughs> uh, and how do you feel about selfies? I used to hate them, and then I learned to love them. Oh. In fact, do you want to do a selfie right now? Let's do it. Let's do it. Here we go. Ready? Smile. Genomics. Okay. <laughs> awesome. And uh, what are three things in your office you can't live without? Three things I can't live without. I can't live without my computer. I can't live without my cardinal shrine on my couch for baseball, and I cannot live without my door that I can close for privacy. Oh, that's so rude. I'm sorry, I need to have quiet. And I don't think you should have a shrine in your office, but that's beside the point. It feels like it. What outfit do you feel most confident in? Sweatpants and a sweatshirt. Okay, at least you have both of those Yes, together. I do. That's Total good. cash. <laughs> Comfort clothes. What's the best part about working at HGRI? Uh, the mission and the people. I'm sorry, it just doesn't get any better than that. Oh, that's nice. It's true. Hey, have you, have you talked to Yaz? I think she was looking for you earlier. I, I saw Yaz earlier, but I haven't seen her recently. Let's I go find her. I think she wants to wish you a happy birthday. Okay, let's go for it. As has everyone around yes, here. Yes, it's been wonderful. You're getting lots of kudos today. Where's Yaz? Where's uh, Yaz? She's right around the corner. I, I know where she is. While we're almost there, yes. what's the biggest misconception about the Human Genome Project? The most frequent misconception is that's still going, but it actually ended in 2003. But genomics continues. Oh, well, that's a relief. There's Yaz. Oh, hi. Hi, Yaz. You're surprised to see me? I'm not surprised <laughs> to see you. I know where you work. I know where you work. You want to wish me a happy birthday? Happy birthday, Dr. You want to ask me some questions? First question, what are you most excited about for the future of genomics? The fact that it's going to be even more exciting for the next 35 years in genomics than it was for the first 35 years. I believe that. I believe it. Okay. What is Francis Collins like to work with? Oh, Francis. Yeah, he's, he's a bit of a fixer-upper. We've struggled getting him to do anything substantive in his life. But uh, actually, I'm just kidding. One word to describe Francis. Amazing. Uh, just amazing. Um, okay, um, but you didn't say that in hour I, ago. I said amazing. What? Just amazing. Oh, okay. So we're going to leave that That's the party it. line. Okay, we're going to okay. leave that alone. Yep. Okay. Um, what is the wildest thing you've ever done in your life? I got to be as part of a scientific delegation that toured the Galapagos Island, and one of the other scientists was Ian Wilmot, the creator of Dolly the Sheep. Oh, that's cool. It was amazing. Okay. Um, can you tell us one of your favorite facts about genomics? Uh, my favorite fact about genomics is in comparison to the moonshot. The moonshot was incredible and successful, and it was repeated 11 times since then, putting a person on the moon. The Human Genome Project, incredible, successful, sequencing a human genome, but it has now been repeated over a million times. Uh, a million times. A million times. A million times. So why are we talking about the moonshot? I'm not talking I... about the moonshot. That's why I always talk about genomics. I like. <laughs> okay, my last one. Okay. Why did you become an HGRI director? Because I knew it would be the honor of my life, which it is. That's so sweet. Well, nice talking to you. Thank you. See you, yeah. Good seeing you. Bye, bye bye. Dr. Green. All right, Eric, we're on our last four questions. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Bring it on. What do you really miss about working in a lab? Wow, working in a lab. You know, it's that moment when you discover something and you realize that you are the only person that knows this scientific fact and you know it's important and you know other scientists are going to be interested and you're going to be able to publish it. And it's like incredible. 
Oh, that sounds cool. I see you're sitting on your shrine. I, I am, my cardinal shrine, yep. Mm, I wonder if you're a cardinal fan. I sort of am. Uh, if you didn't work in genomics, what might you do instead? I'd be a lawyer. Uh, I just, I, hands down, I rest my case. Ah, overruled. Uh, what would you want everyone to know about you? What would I want everybody to know about me? That um, I am very serious at what I do, but I never take myself too seriously. Well, that's very apparent from this video. All right, from the last and 64th question, yeah. do you have any questions for me? I actually do. I've been thinking about this for a very, very long time. Will they still need me? Will they still feed me when I'm 64? Bum, bum. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time to answer all these questions. Absolutely. This was fun. And happy birthday. I appreciate that. Thanks, Jenny.